We continue to preview the 2024 college football season. Our stop today is Upland, Indiana, as we get to visit again with the head coach, the Taylor Trojans coach, Aaron Mingo. It's a privilege to get to visit with you again, sir. I, I'm thankful for you taking time with us on the program here. Last season, let's start there, two and nine. Some FCS programs on the schedule as well to get things going. You did win your your season opener, which was at home. You won homecoming also. So the, the two wins you got, at least, I, I know were, were good wins. I know two and nine, something to build on coming in for this next season. So talk a little bit about last year's record and, and how we build on that. Yeah, you know, I, I think last year, the, as far as the record goes, it was it was clearly a disappointing year. Um where I don't think we met expectations and, and um, anytime that you fall short of expectations or what you believe you're capable of doing, there's going to be some disappointment that comes with that. And, and, you know, quite frankly, it was a year where um, felt like momentum was something we just didn't fully capture and uh, momentum, you know, sometimes people talk about it like it's a fictitious thing, but I've been coaching long enough to know it's real. It's, it's tangible. You can feel it and sense it. And, um, you know, we, I think close the gap with a lot of, teams on our schedule and a lot of teams in, in our competitive conference um, where we were playing better football, but not doing quite enough to win. And we lost some heartbreaker games that um, were really tough to overcome. And, and, um, and so, you know, as far as the win loss column goes, it was not, it was not a season. I think any of us um, at our university were excited about. And I quite frankly, I've been ready to get back, to, uh, get to the next season since last November. It's uh, we were on a mission this off season um, felt like we had an incredible off season um, with recruiting, but then also player development. Um, I think we turned a corner with, with uh, just who we are as a program. And, and um, you know, our guys are connected. They're united. Uh, we're more talented. And uh, we're, we're excited for the 2024 fall. I like how you say that, being on a mission during the offseason. I want to talk about that then before we, we preview 24 just a little bit, and that's culture in a program. I've, I've visited with a couple of coaches over the course of this summer about culture, and and just from your perspective, Taylor is it's a it's faith-based institution, and I realize that the Mid-States Football Association, of which you all are a part, for football, not necessarily so, but the Crossroads League as a whole, as the uh, Taylor, the athletic department is a whole part of the Crossroads League. That's a faith-based league. There's kind of a little bit of culture that's built in. How do you handle culture and, and build culture from a football program with that as a background? Yeah, Joey, that's that's a great question. Um, you know, we we first thing we start with as a program is we, we have a vision that we're going after um, since day one, since I've accepted the position. It's the vision has been the same. And that's we really want to build the leading Christian college football program in the country. And when I unpack what that means to people, I don't want to be a Christian college football program just by association. I don't want to be a Christian college football program just because uh, we happen to be at Taylor University. But I want our guys to be. To, to grow in the relationships with Christ. I want our, our program to be one that, um, you know, really does a great job exhibiting God's goodness, um, where we just, you know, show our guys the ability, teach our guys the ability to, and, and hopefully foster the desire to worship him more and more with their lives. I, I challenge our team constantly about not just being hearers of the word, um, and, but actually doers of the word. And so, there, quite frankly, Joey, there's not an aspect of our football program where our first pillar of our program being a God glorifying program um, isn't it isn't like shouldn't show up. It's everywhere for us, whether it's recruiting, whether it's um, I get a chance to talk to a, a team that's on campus for a camp, um, you know, whether it's, you know, the, the Tuesday night team meeting um, or Saturday pregame in the locker room. That's our first pillar of our program is how do we glorify God through the sport? We we lead with that in recruiting. Um, we identify guys that gravitate towards this desire to, to glorify God through this game. And certainly as a program, when you say God's glory is the first and, and foremost thing that we're going after, um, it's a separator for us. And it's not a it's not something that is just token language or just an affiliation, but it's it's our heartbeat. It's the mission we're on. And um and there's a lot of things that go into building that culture, and, and it starts with recruiting. But you know, this last January, for example, we we took uh, 52 of our players down to the Dominican Republic to go on a missions trip, and um, that's you know really I thought united our team, um, took guys out of the comfort zone, um, which is always powerful when you get a group of guys away from campus. Um, the reason we did that isn't because we're at a Christian school. The reason that we did that is one, we felt like God was calling us to do it, but also just to, um, you know, be able to just reinforce to our guys, what is this truly about? And for our program, winning games is important. Certainly it's a, it's a goal every week that we win the game on Saturday that we play. 
But if, if all we do is win football games and, and we're not pointing guys consistently towards Jesus Christ and, and they don't leave this program um, closer to Jesus Christ or they don't move to the place of like learning how to worship God and all things that they do, um, there hasn't been more and more heart change then, then quite frankly, I think we're failing. And um, that's a calling that we feel here. It's a calling that I feel. It's the way it's, it's that calling in which, you know, we kind of lead from and lead out of. And so Joey, there's not a, there's not an aspect of our program where that shouldn't show up, whether it's on Saturday afternoon when we're playing, um, you know, uh, whoever it is, Sienna Heights, or it's, or it's, you know, during the summer workout, we're going to constantly reinforce that first pillar of our program of being a truly God glorifying program, which is a audacious task. It takes his power and strength to do it. Um, and, uh, but that is what we're about. And there's a lot, you know, for us, there's a line drawn in the sand and say, this is truly what our program is going for. It's what we're striving for. Um, I believe it actually unlocks our greatest potential to win too. Um, when you truly steward the gifts that he's given you to the best of your ability. And it brings us together as a team because we're, we're coming together under this, under this, uh, I guess, purpose together and uniting in that. And it's it's a very powerful deal. And I think it's some of the reason when you're around our university or our football program, I would hope you'd come away feeling like that's different. Um, that's And I hear that all the time as the head coach of your team is different. I've never seen anything like it. I've had opponents respond to us after playing us that, hey, you guys are different um, and, uh, and and we should be different. And, uh, and, and certainly – um, I think there's some proof in the pudding that's already there and we're, and we're constantly growing in, in our culture as well. I, I appreciate that. I, w- I wanted to learn about that today and I'm thankful that, that you took us in depth through that. That means a lot. Well, let's talk then about the offense as we come in and, and a number of players that were on the offense or had significant time last season, a skill position, have moved on in, in different directions. Start right there with the ground game and, and tell us who we might see and, and who – uh, those players might be running behind. Yeah, that's that's a that's a great place to start. Well, you know, we're an option based team, so our run game is, is centered around triple option football, and so we we do have our starting quarterback coming back. And so even as we talk about the running game, it's you know the centerpiece of that is going to be your quarterback, and then certainly the offensive line that that is, is blocking up front. And and the fact that we've got Damon Hockett coming back um, gives us some confidence, and and I think he has grown tremendously. Um, was thrown into the fire a little bit last year and, and um, you know, and showed some really, really good moments and had some awesome stuff, stuff that shows that he can win in this league. Um, but we need to grow in consistency at that position. And I think he's put in a lot of work. He stayed all summer. Um, and I think he's poised for a really good year. And then as far as the offensive line goes, we, we've got, uh, we lost three starters um, to graduation. Um, but uh, we're really excited about what we have coming back. We'd redshirted a couple guys that, uh, you know, we're, I think, very high level recruits that we had signed because of the age of our offensive line. We were able to redshirt them last year. They had a fantastic spring, um, fantastic summer. Um, they're very strong, powerful um, group. And and uh, we, we actually expect our offensive line to take a jump forward this year, even though we lost three starters because of the quality of, of guys we have in that room and the talent that that room has. And our running back room is going to look a lot different from a year ago. Um, but where it's another room we're really excited about. We had a transfer that had to sit out last year. Um, his name's Jamison Chesser. I think he's a kid that has the potential to be the conference player of the year. Obviously, there's a lot of things that would have to go right for that to happen. But I think he is talented enough um, uh, to be a guy that could be in that position. And uh, he's a creator, um, a hard-nosed runner. Uh, he's a captain for us. And uh, last year, he served the team in off-field roles um, while he had to sit out because of an in-conference transfer rule. He's very excited to get back to football and he's already demonstrated that he can be successful in this league. And, and we're real excited about him. And we picked up a transfer running back from Bucknell named Alex Bernard um, that uh, has actually sat out for a couple of years. Um, but he, he started his career at Bucknell, very high level player is another guy that can create, um, especially when you get him in space. He's, he's a guy that's going to be tough to bring down. And then Kyle Tranchik and Braxton Ream are coming back as well. Both those guys, um, you know, carried the ball some for us. And so we have a pretty, we feel like very loaded backfield um, with some guys that are very able to get the job done and can create and uh, and rack up some yards. So we're real excited about that. We're visiting now with Aaron Mingo, who is the head football coach for the Taylor Trojans here on Midwest Sports Net on the Summit. By the way, episode number 350 of the Summit. So a little milestone episode. Thanks for being a part here as we talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. And I encourage you, please subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that. It does make a difference. There are players on the defensive side of the ball that are coming back, including a couple of 
players that have been uh, instrumental for your program in, in the last few years and, and right there in, in the middle of that defense with Avon Jones and Jacob Hockett. Talk a little bit about them and the rest of the defense. Yeah, well, we're excited about our defense. We've got 10 returning starters um, and we added some we added a, a very high level transfer to the mix as well. And so it's it's a group that has a lot of experience. And, and you talked about Avon and, and Jacob. Um, those guys have, uh, you know, I don't know the number off the top of my head of how many tackles those two have been responsible for, but it's it's up there. And and I would imagine they're they're probably near the top of the in the country as as far as number of tackles, um, you know, what they've been able to amass in their careers. And we expect those those guys to have incredible, um, you know, final acts of their college football careers this season. And and uh, they're really the leaders of the defense. And um, you know, our D line, we, we our one starter we lost was was um, a defensive end position, but but uh, all the other guys are back and, and uh, you know, have gotten bigger, faster, stronger. Um, you know, Caleb Ranzaw is a guy that is a, a terrific pass rusher that uh, has an incredible get off, is very explosive and um, is, is probably the best motor guy on our team. And, and we expect him to, to have a really big season, breakout season as well. And then on the back end of our defense, we had we had multiple freshmen playing a lot of football for us last year. And uh, there were some incredible bright spots, but there's also some freshman moments. And and some of those guys growing up, um, being a year older, um, plus you've got a fifth year senior Reed Wheeler back through who's had a lot of starts under his belt. Um, a junior cornerback named Reese Pinkney, who's who's he, this will be his third year starting. So he started I think he started every game of his career um, with the freshman talent that we brought in last year. We feel really good about where the secondary is at as well. And so, yeah, I'm excited to, to you know, get these guys all back on campus officially to start training camp on August 6th. And and I do think our defense has a, the potential to to be a really, uh, you know, be a strength for our program this fall. Yeah, less than a month away. And, and yeah. I know that uh, it'll and it'll go by slowly in some sense, coach, but it'll go by quickly in, in others. So I, on special teams, Lucas Schultz took over for his brother in the kicking game, nine for 13 in field goals last season. He'll be a part of that special teams facet of the game for you all. Yeah, yeah. We we've really essentially got everybody back. Um, that was, you know, as far as our specialist groups, whether you're, you're talking about our snapping with Jake Halderman, who's who's very consistent. Um, does a great job, both short and long snapping. Um, we've got our holder back, you know, two guys that held uh, for PAT field goal and kicking, which is an underrated skill set. But we got guys that are consistent with that. And then Lucas is back. And, and uh, you know, Lucas had his redshirt freshman year last year. Um, he's a local kid. We see him all summer long. And and uh, he's he has got a big leg. And, and he's going to continue to grow in consistency, I think, throughout his career and, and is, a, is a great worker. And um, really, really spends a lot of time perfecting his craft. So I think I think that's another area in our program that we should be able to um, take a jump in. And, and it, you know, the, the whole special teams um, aspect of our program, I think we've gotten more talented. We've gotten um, we've got specialists back. But, you know, all our special teams and, and all as you get bigger, faster and stronger, which I believe we've done as a program, um, you know, it doesn't matter what units out there. I think we're going to see progress for this fall. This fall gets underway on a Thursday night, a week zero game on a Thursday night. First two games on the road, Thursday, August 29th at Siena Heights. One of those heartbreak games I know last for you last year, Coach. The last second field goal, and they come away with a, a victory, a three-point win there. Uh, at Olivet Nazarene, the next Saturday, September 7th, uh, new staff there at, at Olivet Nazarene. And then, of course, the uh, first home game will be Saturday, September 14th, and that is taking on Judson. And Taylor, 2-0 all time. Uh, you've been able to come away with wins in both of the previous meetings there against Judson. So that's how your season opens. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, we, we, uh, we're we not easing into it with uh, taking a trip up to Adrian to see Siena Heights. And and you'd mentioned we, we'd lost a uh, just a heartbreaker of a game on a last-second field goal last year and had opportunities, I think, to win that game and, and, and turn the ball over too much. And um, you know, they made more plays than us at the end of the day. And, and uh, you know, we were close, but weren't quite there. And I'm hoping, obviously, this fall that that changes. And, um, you know, it's, it's exciting to start off with a quality opponent like that, an in-conference opponent, week zero, Thursday night. Um, I know our guys are excited, and, and, and I'm, I'm sure Sienna Heights are pretty excited, too, to welcome us up to Michigan. And all of that Nazarene staff is new, but those are, they. you know, that's Lawrence Tech's staff, essentially, both coordinators and the head coach from Lawrence Tech, who we're very familiar with, and, Avant Mitchell, the head coach, all of it, Nazarene, is a dear friend of mine. And so we have a lot of respect for those guys and are excited to see them week one. And that will be a big test as well. I think they're going to be very well coached and they've 
they've done a good job over the past few years, the previous staff of recruiting and building that roster. And so there's certainly going to be a challenge as well. And then, you know, Judson, Judson, um, you know, they've got a, a newer staff as well. Um, and uh, we didn't play them last year. And so uh, this will be our first chance against this staff to, to actually compete with them. So a little bit of an unknown there um, with those guys. Um, but, you know, a home opener. And if you've ever been to a home opener in Upland, Indiana, um, a night game at Taylor University, it is it's like a party scene. It's incredible. And uh, there's going to be a lot of energy. Um, there's going to be a lot of enthusiasm surrounding the game. And we're looking forward to welcoming them on September 14th. I haven't been to Upland on campus yet, but I do hope to be there someday, Coach. So I, uh, that's encouraging. Sounds like uh, a good place to watch a game. So all the fans should come out September the 14th. That's the home opener there for the Taylor Trojans. Coach Aaron Mingo, thank you so much for taking time with us today here and talking about the Trojans throughout the program. I, I've, I've learned something, and I appreciate your time. And just thanks for being with us here on the Summit. Absolutely, Joey. Thanks for having me.